All right, the great search with DigiKey and Lady Ada. They're the ones who do this. Thank you, DigiKey. Okay. Um, Lady Ada uses all her engineering skills to search the DigiKey site. So what is this week's great search, Lady Ada? Okay. I'm designing a board with the new ESP32 S2, uh, which is a Wi-Fi chip. And hold on. Here you go. Schematic checklist. And um, so this chip, it has native uh, you know, Wi-Fi capabilities. All you have to do is plug in, uh, you know, a uh, inductor and two capacitors and then an antenna um, to make for very easy Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, people love the ESP32 series. And usually I use a module, but for this design, I have to go real small. It has to fit in like, you know, the size of a coin. It's very tiny, this little board. Um, I think it's like, you know, one inch like point, point not, point 0.8 inches by uh, point 0.7 inches, so very small. So I don't have space for a module. Instead, I'm going to put the raw chip on with any passive components and an antenna. So I have to go and find a inexpensive surface mount antenna that's small enough to fit on this PCB. So I thought, let's go to DigiKey and start that search. So it's Wi-Fi, um, so we want a uh, you know Wi-Fi antenna, and basically antennas can be tuned to different frequencies. The frequencies that we want are 2.4-ish gigahertz. Um, luckily, there's a lot of people making Wi-Fi connected electronics, and so we're not gonna have to search that hard to find it. If you're doing something with like 110 megahertz or you know something that's not a standard ISM band, you know, you're, you're gonna have to search a little bit harder, or it might actually be easier because there's less options. Um, but for us, let's just search for Wi-Fi antenna. Okay, so all sorts of antennas you know, modules, accessories, um, you know, all this stuff. Well, we just want the, the antennas themselves. Obviously, that search will pop up any Wi-Fi module that also has antennas. All right, let's go for active parts. Oh, look, there's us. Yay. Um, and let's look for normally stocking and uh, real host compliant, because that's what our minimums are. Um, we want something that comes in a, a tape and reel so not a tray or bulk. And that will, you know, that'll cut down just so we're looking at uh, components that aren't on a tray because there's some larger um, antennas that come bulk. We don't, want, we don't want like a duck antenna. We want like a little surface mount antenna. Okay, um, next up, uh, there's a lot going on here. So there's like so many frequency ranges and I kind of was like, oh my God, like what am I doing here? But the first thing you want to check is like, well, how many bands? Are you going to do like Wi-Fi and cellular? Are you doing like not different protocols, but different bands like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and Zigbee and Thread? They're all going to be 2.4 gigahertz. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you're doing, um, you know, there's some here that are like, oh, they do GPS or cellular plus Wi-Fi. Then you'd want a multi-band antenna. In our case, one band is enough. Okay, cool. So we're actually pretty much, you know, we really dropped down to um, only 79 options or so, which is good. Um, so, you know, here's where you can go for like the gain, right? You know, at the highest gain possible. But the problem is, is that we're constrained by space. And the larger the antenna in general, the better the gain you're going to get. You just have, you know, more space to work with. When it's small, you have to do like funky tricks to get it to resonate um, at the, the frequency that you want to. Um, transmit at. Okay, so let's also go for the center band frequency. So we want we want the center band about 2.4 gigahertz. Then remember, there's also 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. We're not doing that. Okay. So far, so good. Okay, so let's look at some of the options we have here. So here's some cool things. So there's like pillar antennas. Um, so these are antennas that stick up, or right? you pick in place and you put them down and they stick up out of the PCB. I can't, unfortunately, use these. Um, there's also a lot of like these little, like you can see there's like a multi-layer, like there's some sort of like multi-layer fractal antenna thing going on here, which is pretty cool. I'm probably gonna pick up a couple different antennas to try out. Um, you know, if I look at ones like these, I can kind of tell they're probably not gonna fit. These are longer ones. Um, but, you know, anything that looks long, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit because I need kind of something short and squat. Um, but there's antennas like this, and um, one thing I did, you know, my favorite thing is I search 
by reverse stock number to see the most popular ones. Um, these are the, you know, I've seen these antenna, these bent metal antennas on um, U-Blox modules. Um, they're apparently quite good. Uh, and what's neat is, you know, they pick in place and they seat into like little holes on the PCB and, and they go above the PCB so you get nice uh, 3D radiation. Um, I saw a couple designs with these Fractus antennas. So, you know, the question is like, well, which antenna? Also, these like, these are super cool, like cyberpunk, like 3D Molex antennas. I've seen these, I think, um, I think like the, small, I don't remember, the, like the Teenytronics, somebody who makes like very small electronics and, and, and they use these antennas. Um, but the antenna that I'm actually going to use is, oh, it's interesting. It's not, oh, it didn't come up. Why didn't it come up? Hold on. It is the, because I actually used this part. This is the AT40. I wonder if I, I don't know why I didn't come up. Um, so this is the antenna that I used on the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. So let me show that off. So um, if you see this little antenna here, um, this is the same antenna. It's a little tall, but what I like is it's it's very compact. Um, it's like about the same size as a 1206 resistor. So this is the antenna that I'm probably going to pick up just because I already have these. And again, they're like, they're really inexpensive. They're only about 25 cents a piece. Um, however, I also want to um, try out like these Fractus antennas and this Bolex antenna because this looks cool. Like this is very compact and it sticks up. And especially if the price isn't um, too bad. So let me put down 1000 And... Um, you can see like, you know, for 25 cents, there's a lot of like 20, oh, here it is. So for like, you know, 25 or 30 cents, there's a lot of little um, nubby antennas that I can try out. So the good news is that you don't have to have the exact right package on your um, layout. So I'm probably just gonna use like the Johansson, you know, kind of, uh, hold on, sort of standard um, little nub antenna. Um, footprint and then I'm going to probably solder in different ones and then I can use either, uh, use a spectrum analyzer I have a little teeny one or you know what I've also done is just a distance chat test like I just have I just see how far away I can get um, from the router before it stops working where I can measure um, the RSSI and just say like okay of these four boards I made which one has um, the lowest RSSI and that tells me which one the the, you know, the antenna is working out for so there's a lot of options um, Try them all. One thing that was, uh, you do have to watch out for, it's not a big deal, but there's only the height, the size isn't mentioned. So you're going to have to use the photos and dig into the data sheet um, to find the uh, dimensions of the antenna. And then, you know, any um, uh, uh, any layout recommendations. There's also like these gigantic patch antennas. I mean, if you want something with just like really great gain, like these are awesome, but they're they're going to be expensive. Okay, so the one I ended up saying I'm going to go for is this one, 2450AT18B100. There's another couple that are very similar, but they're thinner. This one is a little bit bigger, but I've used it really successfully with all sorts of Bluetooth projects. So I think it'll probably work out for this Wi-Fi project as well. But if people have suggestions for a Wi-Fi antenna that is really small, let me know because I. I've never had to make such a small Wi-Fi board before, uh, but we'll uh, come back on another desk of Lady Ada and see how this antenna fared. That's a great search.